We're going to start today off a little bit differently. I want to start today off with a poem. It's actually a poem written by the great Robert Frost, one of the greatest poems in our history. And the poem reads just like this. We dance round in a ring and suppose, but the secret sits in the middle and knows. Now, I've been trying to understand this poem since last Friday. You see, last Friday when I opened up my hashtag Rise and Grind Planner as I do every single day, there are quotes that are submitted by actual Rise and Grind members on the top of every page. It's actually my favorite part of the Rise and Grind Planner itself. And so in the top left-hand corner of the page on Friday was this quote that was, or this poem actually, submitted by Angie Higdon. And though it's a very short and simple poem, it's also incredibly deep and thoughtful. So when I first read it, I didn't quite get it. Right? Like I didn't, I didn't understand. I mean, it sounded nice, right? We dance round in a ring and suppose, but the secret sits in the middle and knows. So like it sounded all right. It rhymed. It was a couple sentences, but it took me a really, it took me quite a few days actually to finally figure out what it means to me and why it matters to me. Now, the reason I say that is because I believe a poem like this can mean different things to different people. I think that's part of the beauty of uh, being a true artist is you have the ability to extract the imagination of your viewer, your reader, your listener, your receiver, right? I think that's part of the beauty of it. And so to me, this poem is incredibly profound. And so I kind of want to break it down with you a little bit this morning, if that's okay. You see, as I read this poem, we dance round in a ring and suppose, but the secret sits in the middle and knows as soon as i read the word we well that that's you and me right we would be you and me and when i see the word dance right like it says dance it doesn't say walk it's not it's not run it's it's dance And you see, dance, as far as I'm concerned, dance requires emotion. I can run without emotion. I can walk without emotion. But to dance requires emotion. It requires a certain level of energy. And many times, dance requires a lack of thought. Have you ever thought about that? Like, I find it fascinating that my children, at the youngest age, they can hear a a drum, (laughs) they can hear a beat, and they start jamming, right? Even when, I mean, young, six months old, seven months old, eight months old, like, there's no thought behind dance, right? It's not like, I mean, yes, there's choreographed dances, and, you know, my boy Darian's got to think through all his dance steps, I'm sure. But what I'm saying is the type of dance where nobody's watching The type of dance where you're just free, like my kids have these crazy dance parties at the end of the night and some of them are break dancing and back flipping and cartwheeling and they're not thinking, they're just feeling. It's an emotion, right? With lack of thought. It comes from a place where we're free. And so as I continue to break down and read this poem, we dance, we dance round in a ring 
And to me, when it says in a ring, that means we're not really going anywhere. Right? Like we're not going anywhere. If we're dancing around in a ring, where we're dancing around in a circle, we're not going anywhere. And then the next word, it says, and suppose, which is we assume we know, right? We assume we know what we're doing. So we dance around in a ring and suppose when I, that, that sentence to me, when I put it all together, it says you and me, me and you, it's not just me. This isn't a solo sport, right? You and I with emotion and zero thought are dancing around in a circle not really going anywhere, assuming we know what the heck we're doing. <laughs> but the secret, which is what the poem says next, it says, but the secret, right? And I love that word secret. It's so mysterious, right? It's so mysterious. Like as soon as you hear a secret, you're like, oh, I got a secret. What's the secret? I got to know the secret. There's a secret. It's a mysterious thing, right? The secret in this poem sits stoically, deliberately lacking motion. It is solid. It is an immovable force. It is unwavering. The secret sits in the middle and knows is what the poem says. We dance around in a ring and suppose, but the secret, the mysterious secret sits, doesn't say stand, doesn't say dances, doesn't say fiddles its thumb. The secret sits in the middle and knows. <laughs> knows what? Sits in the middle and knows what? Well, I believe it knows the thing that we think we know. That we suppose we know. And so my question for you this morning is what is it that you're dancing around in a circle mindlessly chasing and assuming it will be all that you need to be happy, healthy, and purposeful? Like, I want you to fill in the blank. What is it, that thing that you're dancing around in a circle mindlessly chasing and assuming it is going to be all that you need? What is that thing for you? Is it, is it a fancy car that you're chasing? Is it is it is it is it, is, it, is it the big house if we, if we could just get the big house with all the rooms and all the space maybe a little infrared sauna downstairs maybe it's some type of nice new toy or a flashy new phone or device electronic device or or maybe it's even a a relationship it's a person it's a it's it, it's something of this earth like what is it that you are chasing and assuming, supposing it is going to be the thing that you need to be happy and healthy and purposeful? You see, to me, this poem speaks to my truth. And in my truth, the answer, the secret, is not in the things of this world, but rather the strong immovable, unwavering source, the one who knows, knows what? Well, the one who knows this, Jeremiah 29, 11, it says this, for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future.
Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you, my friend? How are you, my friend? You see, there's no excuse for you not pushing yourself to the next level. In order for you to create a new you, you must have a new mindset. When teams come together, we can create things that are greater than the sum of all of their parts. Good morning and welcome to Hashtag Rise and Grind. I am your host, Glenn Lundy. I am a husband to one, a father to eight, and the creator of what is going to be the number one most watched morning show in the world. It is 5.30 a.m. and I hope that you are ready to rise and grind. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you, my friend? How are you, my friend? Dude, today is Tuesday, Taco Tuesday. I love Taco Tuesday. Today is Taco Tuesday, September 7th, 2021. And what's crazy is today is the very first and the very last time it'll ever be. First and last time it'll ever be Tuesday, September 7th, 2021. So I want to make sure we make the absolute most, and I do mean the absolute most of this absolutely incredible, incredible day. Hey, also for many people, today is day nine of the 67 day challenge. That's right. There are over 900 people around the planet that are currently participating in the 67 day day challenge, right? 67 day challenge. We're doing five simple things every single morning. No snooze button, no phone first thing in the morning, writing down our gratitude and goals, taking care of ourselves physically, some form of exercise, and then last but not least, sending out an encouraging message. And so over 900 people around the world are participating. Some people are on day nine. Some people had to restart and today's day one. Uh, some people started three days in, so on and so forth. Uh, but for me personally, today is is day nine of the challenge. And I gotta tell you, it's been really impactful for me and I am so grateful for those that are participating in the challenge. I am so grateful seeing all of your posts, seeing your family, seeing you push yourselves, seeing you uh, get out of your comfort zone, seeing all of those things, right? Like it's really been inspiring for me. I have been uh, extra driven. I've always been driven, but I've been extra driven thanks to you. Like you're motivating me, you're inspiring me. Uh, yesterday, I ran two and a half miles with an average pace of eight minutes and 25 seconds, which is not super fast for some, but golly, it's borderline death for me. <laughs> it's borderline death, but I did it and it felt good. I walked in the house, my wife saw the sweat pouring down my body. It was like, oh my God, this dude's about to die. And I'm like, hey, I'm about to die, but I didn't die. And I feel really good about it. And so thank you for the push. I really appreciate you uh, uh, running with me on this. It's really been impactful. And again, if you've made a mistake or you've slipped up, just jump right back in. It's okay, right? Like just jump back in in start today man the morning five it's all about creating the disciplines and the habits that are going to feed your mind body and spirit in a powerful way and what's cool about this particular 67 day challenge is we are actually counting down to the 1000th episode of hashtag rise and grind right this is episode 957 here so we're counting down to the thousandth episode of hashtag rise and grind and we are going to be celebrating that 1000th 
episode in Lexington, Kentucky. Like, we are having a party in Lexington, Kentucky to celebrate 1,000 episodes of Hashtag Rise and Grind. And it is going to be an incredible experience, I promise, for everyone that is going to be in attendance. We have a powerful, incredible speaker from all around the world that are gonna be there doing TED Talk style talks, right? So little 17 minute hits, boom, 17 minute hits. And then of course, there's gonna be opportunities for networking with all of these folks, the Dave Melters, the Danelle Delgados, you know, Brian Ben Stocks, Tamara will be there, I'll be there, Sarah will be there, there'll be a bunch of us there. My boy Darian will be there uh, uh, as long as they allow him to from the Lion King. I know we got to put a little disclosure in there, uh, but it's going to be incredible. Steven's coming in from Hungary. It's going to be awesome. And so I would love for you to be there with us because not only are we going to have speakers, we're also going to have musical performances. We're also going to have uh, a band. We've got like all kinds of surprises. It's going to be absolutely incredible. And you can come for one day, for two days, for three days, whatever you want to do. I promise you when you walk away, it's going to be incredibly spiritual experience for everyone and again no matter what your belief system is it is going to be a group of like-hearted individuals throwing a big old party so i would love for you to be there with us at that if you haven't gotten your tickets yet go to growforgod.com growforgod.com just do it right now listen lock it in make the commitment to show up just make the commitment to show up. Things might happen. Well, what if this happens? Well, what if that happens? I totally get it. Dude, I'm telling you. Make the commitment to show up and the universe will start to figure out the path for you. You see, I actually really, 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 really love this word commitment. Like I once interviewed a ultra marathon runner. She actually lives in the Charlottesville area where my friend Liza, who it was her birthday yesterday, by the way. Happy birthday, Liza. My friend Liza, uh, they have a bunch of dealerships there in, in Charlottesville. And I interviewed this woman named Alyssa Godeski. Right. She is a an ultra marathoner, just an incredible human, a, a really powerful, spirited human. And when I interviewed her, she said one sentence, literally one sentence that transformed how I perceive a lot of things in my life. And here's what she said. I'm going to give it to you right now. Make sure you're paying attention. Lean in. All right. Take a note if you need to grab a pen. Here's what she said. Commitment doesn't care how you feel. <laughs> she said, commitment doesn't care how you feel. Now, listen, that one sentence changed my perspective on a lot of things. Like once I made the commitment, right? And I understood this idea of commitment doesn't care how you feel. When I started to have those like feelings of, oh, I don't feel like it, my brain all of a sudden would just kick in and be like, so? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to do it. So? But, 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 but it hurts. Like, it sucks. Like, I am miserable. So? But wait, wait, but wait, 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 wait. But, but, but Glenn, but Glenn, you're sick, bro. You're tired, bro. Like, it's impossible anyway. And then my brain kicks in and my brain's like, So? <laughs> you made a commitment. Commitment doesn't care how you feel. Commitment only cares about one thing. Commitment only cares about the result. That's it. That's all that commitment cares about. 
Commitment only cares about the result. And you know, I find it really interesting that God is very much the same way as commitment. You see, God knows that there are going to be times in your life and times in mine where we waver in our faith. God knows that. You see, God knows that there will be times where we will question his existence and his authority. Lord knows I did. I didn't believe God existed until I was in my late 20s. But see, God knows this. He knows there will be times where you are going to question his existence or authority. He knows that. God also knows that as the world is seemingly crumbling (laughs) down around us in a plume of death, and destruction. He knows that we are going to look at him wide eyed and be like, bro, (laughs) how can you possibly just sit there and allow all this to happen? Like God, how can you just sit there and allow all of this to happen? How can you let, how can you let a family lose their child? How can you let our loved ones be taken this way? How can you let the division, the fighting, the violence, the bloodshed, how can you let it, God? He knows. He knows, but he's committed to the result. You see, God is committed to the plan that he has for you. The plan that he has for you to prosper and not to harm you, but to give you hope and to give you a future. Now, see, of course, that's really frustrating. (laughs) I don't know about you, but it's frustrating for me. Like, I remember when my dad died at 52 years old. He was happy. He was healthy. He was hearty. And he just laid down on a Sunday afternoon to take a nap. And he never woke up. I remember how that felt. And I remember, I I remember saying, but wait, 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 wait. I like, I haven't made him proud yet. I remember saying, no, 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 wait, wait. I didn't get to say goodbye yet. I remember thinking, wait, man, wait, God, but wait, like, I miss his contagious smile. I miss him every single day. And this stoic figure in the middle of the circle looks back without words and says, so? Now here's what's interesting though. Though there are many moments of frustration, God will actually use all things to help strengthen our trust in him. This week, we've been talking about money and how God can actually use money to strengthen your trust in him. Let me read a verse for you real quick. The verse says this. This is Matthew 6, 32 and 33. It says this. For the pagans run after all these things. That's me and you. We're the pagans, okay? We run after all of these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them, okay? 
He knows that you need money. He knows that you need a roof. He knows that you need food. He knows that you need supplies. He knows all this, right? And then here's what it says. Here's what it says. Verse 33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. That's what it says. Now, listen, I don't care whether you, you know, religiously or anything. I'm not interested in religion or any of that. I'm talking about learning from the number one best-selling book of all time. Okay. 3.6 billion copies. The most impactful book ever written. Like there's lots of good books out there. Okay. All right. Gary Vee's got some good books. You should probably read some of those. Uh, Zig Ziglar's got some good ones. Right. Uh, uh, Dale Carnegie got some good books. All right. Got some good books. This one book, this historic text, okay, this book, it's got, this is a roadmap. It's a roadmap, I'm telling you. It's a roadmap. It is an unlock. It is a cheat code. And this, this is a direct message from the one who sits in the center and knows that thing that we suppose we know. <laughs> So listen, this is, this is what this is saying. What this is saying in this verse where it says, for, where, where, where it says, for the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. What this is saying is do what you do. Like do what you do. Like go out there and build wealth. For real, go out there and build wealth. Well, go out there and grow your business. Like, do you boo? For real, do you boo? But do it for what? But do it for what? But do it for what? Do it for God's sake, man. Do it for God's sake. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. This is stewardship. So yesterday we talked about this word stewardship. A biblical worldview of stewardship can be consciously defined as this. Utilizing and managing all resources. All. A-L-L. -L, right? Utilizing and managing all resources God provides for the glory of God and the betterment of his kingdom. All resources God provided for you use those for the glory of God and grow them expand them abundantly see listen God will not only use money to gain your trust but God will also use money to develop your trustworthiness listen to this Luke 16 11 says this so if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly, worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? If then you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will entrust you with the true riches? See, God will use money to gain your trust and he will also use money to ultimately understand and get the, get the complexity of his trustworthiness in you. You see, commitment doesn't care how you feel. The result is all that matters. You and I are called to live an abundant life. One where the footprints that we leave behind positively impact those that come after us. But not for our glory, but ultimately for his. The God of the universe. The God that made everything. The God who stoically sits in the knowing with all of the desires for you in his heart and the fortitude to look at you as if to say, so just keep 
growing. If you need more videos like this, you can go to glennlundy.com. There's a bunch of them up there. You can go to glennlundy.com if you need more videos like this. If you haven't already, if you're watching this on uh, Facebook, do me a huge favor, hit the share button. I'd greatly appreciate it. Of course, on Clubhouse, hit the plus button, invite some friends. We're going to talk about this a little bit more. And of course, on Instagram, you too as well. I would love for you to share this out, get the word out. It would, it would mean the world to me. If you haven't gotten your tickets yet for the Grow Your Business for God's Sake event, do it now. <laughs> Just make the commitment. Just do it now. Growforgod.com. I promise the rest will come together. I would love to see you there. But most importantly, most importantly, do me a huge favor. Go out there today. Have an incredible day. Step into the absolute best version of yourself that you can possibly be. Just keep growing. Just keep growing and don't do it for you, but do it for God's sake. And then come back here again tomorrow morning, 5.30 a.m. We're going to do this all over again on hashtag rise and grind. I love you, my friend. If nobody's told you that yet today, I want to be the first. I absolutely stinking Love Every day I Let's wake go. up is a blessing and a challenge Ain't no stressing, I just manage Steady building up my balance I've been trusted with these talents To use to my advantage To expand my bandage And level up my status I got a calling I feel like Solomon Forever we bowling For heaven I'm conquering And I'm going all in Whether I got five talents or one I'm gonna make it multiply Until you tell me well done, well done hey. I don't do no stressing Know you see me placing here, yeah, praise is my weapon. I'm just reaching for my blessings, stretching, reaching for my blessings. Grow your business for God's sake, for God's sake. See me winning cause I got faith in God's grace. I've been putting in overtime, I've been working all day. Grow your business for God's sake, for God's sake. The mission is to be the best version of myself. Make the world better when I've left and build generational wealth. Teaching your lessons, leave an impression. Increase my investments, keep reaching for your blessings. We rise, evolve, and pack together. Out here building bridges, stretch it to the max. 